this is Rainbow Harmony here to help you find balance and peace to live a more colorful life and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another rainbow talk and the topic is how to accept yourself fully and stop holding yourself back. So if you're interested in five ways that could help you accept yourself fully and stop holding yourself back, then stay tuned. But don't forget to subscribe or like for more content and ring the bell so you get notifications. So you guys, the first step to accept yourself fully and stop holding yourself back is to make peace with the past. We all have a story. We all have a past. At this point in life, if you've reached your 20s, your 30s, 40s, 50s, basically if you've kind of grown into an adult here, your story is gonna have some trauma whether or not you're aware of it. And that isn't to minimize anyone else's situation because all of us have gone through different things. Um, but there is something that we all share in common, that we, we have traumas, we have chapters of our story that aren't necessarily our favorites. And for some reason, our brain just really tends to fixate on these traumas. Whether you're someone whose life has been f like filled with a lot of it, or you've just had a little bit of it, your brain is going to fixate on those traumas. And I think it's like a survival instinct, a survival mechanism to be looking at the past, to ask yourself, how can I not repeat this? It's normal or natural to have a fear, like once something traumatic happens to you, to be afraid that it could happen again. I feel like that's part of survival or self-preservation but it can be super difficult. So making peace with the past, I could do a whole other video on that topic, but the first thing I would say is to understand the story of your past. Write out what you've been through, what sticks with you, what's bothered you, what's upset you. Sometimes you wanna actually hit up a professional or licensed counselor or therapist if you feel like you need to work through some of this trauma. But one thing's for sure, burying that away and running away from what's happened in your life, it can be, it can cause issues. It's all about awareness. It's all about allowing yourself to look back at your past and to understand it. So however this makes you feel, um, you know, it could be something that's really intense for you to look back at. It could actually be pretty thought provoking. You can definitely ask a lot of questions as you look back, but I think that's something that life kind of naturally guides us through is looking back at our past and looking back at our story. So step one is just being able to look back and observe it and be there for yourself and be present and to heal through that, okay? The next step is to rewrite your story. So now that you've looked back at the past, you've spent some time there, you've healed from it or you're processing it, there comes a point where you need to rewrite your story. And this doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge the past. It's not about spiritual bypassing or emotional bypassing past the past. It's just when you come to that natural phase in the grieving process where you feel like you've reached acceptance and you can finally like move forward and, and look forward to new possibilities. The way to create that is to rewrite your story and ask yourself, even though this and this and this happened, can't I create a beautiful new life and a beautiful new reality for myself? Can I move forward with love and with gratitude for myself and the amazing decisions and choices I've made and how I've been strong enough to go through all of this? So it's just reframing and rewriting your story in the context of who are you now? What are you celebrating about your life now? What are your hopes and wishes and dreams and desires about the future? And how does the strength that you've had to go through everything you've been through support you with that? It's just being able to look back at the past and see yourself as the hero of your story, to see yourself as the one playing the starring role in your story to see yourself as strong, to see yourself as brave, to see yourself as courageous, to understand what has molded you and what has shaped you. And, and it's basically deciding your perception. You get to decide. That's the thing is that some of this contrast and these traumas and these things that come into our lives, sometimes we don't really have a choice. 
Um, I'm not one of those people who believes that you completely manifest every single thing that's ever happened to you that you attracted it. Some of you guys were abused. Some of you guys were let down. Some of you guys were really hurt. And I don't think that's something you called upon yourself. This is a world of contrast. And so contrast will come into your life. But you're the one who gets to decide what is this going to mean for you moving forward? Where are you going to go from here? And that is how you empower yourself. So rewrite your story, okay? Number three, how to accept yourself fully and stop holding yourself back. Vision board. Now that you're at this point where you've processed some of the past, you're rewriting your story, you're starting to empower yourself in the way that you see yourself and the way that you look back on the past and your vision, your perception, you've worked a little bit on that. From that energy, you start feeling more confident to dream. And so the natural next step is to organize. Organize your thoughts, your dreams, your desires. And we can have desires on all levels. You know, we have emotional desires, we have physical desires, um, we have yeah, very materialistic desires sometimes, we have spiritual desires, and it's a really good thing to be able to realize what that is, like what your aim is, what your goal is, what you're looking for, what you want to create in this life, because you're the master creator of your life. You can create anything you want. And so when you start waking up to that and realizing that, you can be more intentional with how you pursue um, your desires and goals. Some of us, we wander around in life for a while, kind of aimless or with no goal. We like are following along with what other people are doing or we're following what our parents or our teachers or our society or community has told us. And I think it's a really fascinating thing when you can break away from that and ask yourself, what are my desires? What are my gifts? What are my talents? What do I want to create? It's basically just lo uh, learning yourself, knowing yourself. I think it's a natural thing that happens as you grow up is you start wanting to know more about yourself. <laughs> you start wanting to explore and discover a little bit more about what makes you tick. And so the vision board is just kind of a springboard for that. It's a place that you can put pictures and writing and clips of what you want to create in your reality. It's just, you know, when you wake up and you're feeling lost or you're, you're kind of stuck in life, which happens sometimes, or when you're having a little existential crisis, you can go back to your vision board, remind yourself what your goal is, and remind yourself what it is you're work, working for, and make sure you're in alignment with that. So number four, how to accept yourself fully and stop holding yourself back. It's all about your daily habits, because you're at this point where you're like processing the past, you're rewriting your story, you have changed your perception a bit and you're, you kind of know what you want now. You spent some time exploring that, getting in touch with your gifts and talents, making a vision board. Well, how are you actually going to implement um, the actual physical action it's going to take for you to reach your goals on that vision board? How are you actually going to make that happen? Well, really, all you have is the day. That's the thing is the future really is just a concept. That's something I've learned a lot working with the tarot. All you really have is the here and now. So if you can break your goals and your dreams down into just what do I need to do today to get closer to that goal, um, that's going to be so powerful for you. And just work from there. I think it's good to have a long-term vision or a long-term goal and know what needs to happen eventually, but you need to bridge that gap and figure out what do you need to do right here, right now. And so that can look like anything from just figuring out your health, because a lot of times in order to start that business or you know, move to that place or manifest the soulmate or whatever it is in order to, to, to get what our desire is, we're going to have to make some changes and align with that. And a lot of times that starts with your health, you know, to be able to go out in the world, start making things happen. You need to feel good about yourself and you need to have the energy to do it. So just focusing on your healthy eating, getting good sleep, drinking water, hydrating, a little bit of exercise, stretching, getting some nature, just making sure that your needs are met. You want to start there. Start with self-care. Start with your daily habits. And you don't have to be perfect. And everyone's kind of got their own way of taking care of themselves. You know, some people just do it differently than others, and that's okay. But you just want to make sure, like, that you understand and know what self-care is to you and make sure you're really supporting yourself. So daily habits and then making sure you're doing five or 10 minutes a day or half an hour a day 
towards your big goal, your big dream, whether that's research or taking a class or getting the tools, materials, and supplies together, whether it's networking and meeting people that can help you further on your goal, whether it's hustling, save the money, pay off the debt, whatever it is, like that's, you, you wanna make sure you're making time for that and, and tuning into that every day, okay? You can have days off where you're like, today I'm not doing habits, I'm just gonna lay around, I'm just gonna let myself rest, do that. If you're somebody who doesn't do well with having daily habits, just give yourself a lot of breaks, but find what works for you, okay? That's the key here. Number five. This kind of goes along with number two. We were talking about with number two, rewriting your story and your perception. So number five is self-talk. Really standing back and observing how you're speaking to yourself every day. What is going on inside your head? What are you saying to yourself in your head? What are you saying about others in your head? And just start by observing that voice. You might be shocked. Sometimes we don't realize that we're bullying ourselves or that there's a lot of negative chatter going on in our head. And oftentimes that's because you grew up around other people that had negative talk um, it could be because of society or the teachers you had. Once again, people you're around, it just kind of gets to you. Um, our inner critic can sometimes be really harsh. So the first thing you're going to do is sit back and kind of observe that. Spend a couple days or weeks, however long you need to just start becoming more aware of that voice. And sending love to that voice, sending appreciation. That voice is just trying to keep you safe. It's probably got some insecurities, some doubts, just wants to make sure you're okay. Um, it could be tapes that are being kind of played in your head from things people said to you in the past. You want to start observing that and asking yourself, where does that come from? Is that really me? That's not me. Okay, release that. And over time, you can start slowly speaking kinder to yourself. Like, I suggest to speak to yourself as if you're a small child. Let's say that you dropped something, you spilled something. Instead of beating up on yourself, you can say, oh, it's okay. Let's let's clean that up, let's get the towel, let's relax here, it's gonna be all right. Like, soothe yourself, comfort yourself. When you look in the mirror and you've had like a long night and you wake up the next day and you're like, oh gosh, like, I look so awful. Maybe just be kind to yourself and say, oh, you know, well, you were up late last night and you're gonna be okay, let's drink some water, you're beautiful, you know, everybody has days where they feel off or they look off or something. You're, you're gorgeous just the way you are in your natural state. Like, it takes practice. Um, to really start talking to yourself like that in your head and you have to take it slow and let it be a natural thing because if you don't then you find yourself kind of arguing with yourself in your head and you just kind of go off. <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Let me know down in the comments below. But it's just like every once in a while kind of interjecting and reminding yourself that you can be kinder, you can speak kinder and this just takes practice to where eventually you can just observe and not judge what's going on inside your head and like also have some positive reinforcement naturally coming along to help you. Affirmations are really great with this. I'll tell you my experience. I've been doing affirmations for I think actually four years now and my self-talk is becoming so much more positive and I'm feeling a lot more peaceful. I still catch myself sometimes like the inner critic coming, but it's not as tough. And I've been doing affirmations almost every single day for around five or 10 minutes. There have been weeks or times where I've taken, like I just haven't done it because I got off my workout routine or some things. I like to do mine after I work out when I stretch. I put on my affirmations and I just stretch for like 10, five or 10 minutes while I'm doing affirmations, like in my head. I don't even say them out loud. Sometimes I do, but it's powerful, you guys. You know, whatever you believe on the inside is gonna manifest on the outside. It's true, whatever you believe you receive, okay? There's, ex there's exceptions to that, okay? Um, I definitely have had some very negative beliefs and didn't completely manifest that. I don't think it works as like intensely as you would think. So if you're having a bad day or you've been having some negative thoughts, don't be afraid that, oh no, my thoughts are gonna manifest, ah! Like you have to really be acting on those thoughts and acting in that direction. So I don't want you guys to be freaked out, but basically you do have, it's gonna set yourself up for success. If you can think positively, you're saying positive things to yourself, it's gonna be easier to take action in that positive direction. So it'll help you out. That's kind of how I want you guys to see it, not to be afraid of it, 
if you realize what's going on upstairs is negative, don't be afraid of it. Just work with it. And you know, many of us have to have to deal with this. I I don't know if there's anybody who just naturally has positive, happy, supportive thoughts about themselves. I mean, if so, then great for them. <laughs> but I think this is something a lot of us struggle with. So. I hope that you guys liked this talk today. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to see me do a talk on, then drop that comment below. And I will see you next time. Peace out.